So this is an F major 9, C major 9, D minor 9, and B flat major 9. And in today's video, I want to share three ways you could possibly apply this chord progression creatively. Hi, I'm Steve, hope you're doing well. I've spent over the past 20 years learning and playing guitar, and I've been helping thousands of guitarists on this channel with learning math rock and adjacent styles of music. And one thing I find I never get sick of passing on to you in these videos are little music theory tricks you can apply to creating your own unique chord progressions. And it's tricks like this I want to share with you today through this chord progression. Let's begin with the first way you could apply this chord progression creatively. Going back to when I first wrote it, I had the idea I wanted to write a progression that gave some feel-good vibes and one that I knew I could have more of a straight strumming pattern. You know that you typically hear in like a sing-along section or a bridge section to a, a Midwest emo or pop punk song. So to get started I chose my favourite chord type, the trusty major 9. And then I added two more chords, a C major 9, the first, and a D minor 9, the second. However, I got stuck in this loop of playing between these three chords. And it didn't really sound resolved the way that I wanted it to. So I thought to myself, I think I need to add an extra chord here. And this D minor 9 kind of adds a lot of tension in the progression. It doesn't feel amazingly resolved between the second and the fourth here. So I worked out eventually that I could use this B flat major 9, which resolved nicely. And by borrowing the drums from the song Wedding Singer by the wonderful Modern Baseball, it could sound something like this. Interrupting Steve here, if you're interested in learning more chord progressions just like the one in this video then be sure to join my weekly newsletter where you'll join hundreds of other guitarists getting some juicy chord progression landing in your inbox every Wednesday. There's a link in the description to join. Thanks and back to the video. So moving on to our next creative application. You may have noticed that I snuck in an extra chord in that previous example. And this was done on purpose to break up the repetition, grab my listeners ears and perhaps signal a section change. But where did this chord come from and how did I choose it? Well, just like our B flat major nine, the flat major seven chord that's borrowed from C minor, this E flat major chord, is also borrowed from that parallel minor key and we refer to this chord as the flat major 3 chord because in our original key of C major the third is a minor third and that's going to be E minor but our borrowed chord is a semitone lower hence the flattened indication. So now you know that in between our minor second chord and our minor third chord there's a lovely major chord hidden there waiting for you to start using. And to pay homage to the band Delta Sleep who use this borrowed chord approach to create some seriously uh, awesome and interesting chord progressions. For our second creative example I will use the drum track from one of their songs called View to a Fill which is also an excellent way to show you how you could arpeggiate these chords in the progression creatively. Alright, so are you ready to take this chord progression to a whole other level? So for the last creative approach I've added three more chords to the progression and now it's going to go like this, an F major 9, a G7 second inversion, a C major 9, followed by an A7 first inversion, then a D minor 9, the E flat major 9, then the B flat major 9, and lastly a C7 and then back to the start of the progression. But where did I get these extra chords from? Well it wasn't magic nor is it a case of throwing my thing fingers on the fretboard till I found a chord. They come from another neat chord trick you may have heard of called secondary dominance. In any key moving from the fifth chord to the first chord provides this lovely resolution to tension buildup on the fifth chord. So for example in the key of C major that would be you know going G7 
seven to C major or for secondary dominance, we apply the same 5-1 cadence to other chords in the key. For instance, going back to the key of C and choosing a D minor chord, the fifth above that is going to be the A, and we can simply play that A7 chord to the D. Typically, this would have been an A minor chord, but instead we're going to go A7 to D minor instead. It's subtle, but it does make a difference to the sound. And to quickly go through our progression to show you where all the secondary dominants are, to begin we've got our trusty F major 9. Then we insert this secondary dominant here, which is going to be this um, G7 second inversion. And originally that would have gone up to here, let's say, when I was creating it, this G7 here, but I felt it was a bit of a jump from here down to the C. So what I did instead was invert the chord and that got me closer to that sound there. So I preferred that overall. Then from there, we have that C major nine chord that we've already established in the progression. And after that, I added another secondary dominant to move to the D minor nine. Again, the A7 sounded okay there, but I felt like if I use this, you know, this first inversion here, then it chromatically walks up from C major, and then A7 first inversion, and then to the D minor 9 there. So I felt like that was just a nice bit of voice leading going on there in the chord progression. From there, we've got the the trusty E flat major nine that we've borrowed, then to the B flat major nine, and then I added one more borrowed chord to go five, one, to bring us back to the start of the progression again. As this chord progression has quite a few chords in it, it can be quite tricky to play them as all equal lengths. Instead, I imagine using the secondary dominant chords more or less like passing chords, slotting in between the main chords of the progression, something like this. So going back to earlier in the video, if you'd like to learn more about that borrowed chord concept, then I highly recommend checking out this video here. Thanks for watching, thank you very much to the patrons that support this channel, and I'll see you in another episode. See you then.